everybody. Let's talk about this person with a very interesting name. His name is Mark Fishbach, but he goes by Markiplier. So I want to talk to you a little bit about his health conditions that have come up a couple times in his life. And um, he has experienced what's called intestinal blockage. Another word for intestinal blockage is bowel obstruction. So let's talk a little bit about him. Markiplier is a really fascinating young man. I say young because I'm probably closer to his mother's age. Um, he is 35 years old, he's young. So he's an American YouTuber, actor, filmmaker, producer, and podcaster. Um, his real name, like I said, is Mark Fishbach. He has no children at this time, but he does have a beautiful partner in his life named Amy. He's not just any old YouTuber though, you guys. He has millions of followers. And when he started his YouTube channel in uh, 2012, within two years, he had over 10 million subscribers. I had to really look at that to make sure. Most of his popularity had come from his Let's Play type of YouTube channel. And what Let's Play is, and you can ask your kids about this, but what I've learned about it and what I understand is it just is where somebody is uh, playing a YouTube video or playing a video on YouTube, doing commentary, having natural reactions to something maybe horror, horror scary, interesting. And during the gaming and the natural reactions, other people are watching. So they're living uh, through, you know, that person playing the game as well. So that's what really earned a lot of his subscribers, and rightly so, because I don't know that anybody else was doing it quite like he was. Um, on Instagram at this time, he has 12 million followers, and on YouTube, he has 36.8 million followers. Okay, I just want you to let that sink in, because if you've ever had a YouTube channel, you've done YouTube videos, I'm obviously quite new. I mean, I did them a couple years ago, stopped, and now I'm just trying to do some more. My interest is health related topics, but you cannot make money. What I, I mean, you can, but you need to have a lot of YouTube subscribers onto your channel. You need to have people that are going to interact, share, like, and subscribe. That's why we say that all the time. Otherwise, your content is not being seen. It helps us immensely when somebody just subscribes um, and interacts with us. Anything, hello, thanks, good job, I have that experience too. The statistics are that, and I'll put this up too, one-fourth of 1% 1 of channels on YouTube make money. One-fourth of 1%. So that means I'll probably never ever make money. And some people, it takes them five years, 10 years to make money. You have to have minimum 1,000 subscribers and you have to have 4,000 views and ongoing interaction with people who are interested in you or in your content. So Markiplier's estimated net worth at this time is 38 million. I will put the link below of where I saw that. All right, so I want to talk about his medical condition that he has dealt with. In March of 2015, he was hospitalized and he had surgery for a small bowel obstruction. Um, and then in December of 2020, he was hospitalized again for another small bowel obstruction, though it appears that in the year of 2020, when he was hospitalized, he did not have to have surgery to resolve that. A small bowel obstruction is an awful thing to go through. He was in a lot of pain. People who have this go through an immense amount of pain. And it takes a long time to recover for most people because if you have a complete bowel obstruction, you need an NG tube, you need IV fluids, you need to get back and get surgery done to clear that obstruction. Because yes, it can be it can be life-threatening. You can develop an infection and, you, and then that part of your intestine could possibly um, die off. And so then you'd have to have that part taken out um, you might have a colostomy bag or ileostomy. It's going to take a long time for your bowels to start working again. It is no easy street thing. I know he was in an immense amount of pain after his surgery. I'm going to guess it was the 2015 one since, like I said, I think it resolved itself in 2020. So what are the symptoms of a small bowel obstruction? I want you to know what the symptoms are, just in case you or a loved one experience some of these symptoms. You want to get to your provider. You want to get to the ER. You want to get to urgent care. You don't want to resolve your possible bowel obstruction at home by yourself. There are people that do that. They look it up online, on the internet, and they see, oh, if I drink this, take that, or do a bunch of enemas, um, I can clear this myself. But that's really dangerous. So you don't want to do this kind of thing on your own. Um, the symptoms of a small bowel or a bowel obstruction 
are really what it says. There is nothing that's passing through. So there's nothing that's going um, out through your small bowel into your large intestines and on out. If you have your obstruction in your large intestines, then things aren't gonna move there either. Oh, first I should finish my thought on what are the symptoms? Pain, inability to pass gas, inability to pass stool, abdominal distension. Some people become very ill with vomiting, with um, even fe a fever. Um, they can become ill very quickly. It can come on acutely very fast or can take time and come on chronically over time. But nothing is moving. So that's really the bottom line. With this blockage, what is in this? What are the contents? The contents can be stool, a complete blockage with stool, different types of food, air, fluids, just about anything. Now, this isn't the same as a bezoar. Okay, I'll talk about what a bezoar is. That's kind of an interesting word, I know. We used to see kids with bezoars a lot. It's a different type of contents, and often it's in the stomach, but not always. So I'll do another video on what a bezoar is, and we'll stick to just what the symptoms are and what the contents are of a bowel obstruction. So once you get into the hospital, Usually by the time you're in the ER, perhaps, before you get admitted to the floor, you're going to have an NG tube. The nasogastric tube goes down into the stomach. It is hooked up to the wall for on wall suction, usually either intermittent suction or continuous suction. The idea is to get this contents out and help resolve the problem. If that doesn't work uh, and be on bowel rest, obviously don't eat, don't drink, don't try to do an enema before you come in. If that doesn't work, then surgery is usually what would be the next option. Why do people get this in the first place? And then how do you prevent it? So um, when I looked up why people get it, it talks about adhesions. And I know Markiplier also talked about that and said it was from previous GI surgeries. What were those previous surgeries? I've never been able to find that. Um, but you can get adhesions or strictures from previous surgeries. Surgeries can be anything from C-sections to pelvic surgeries, um, GYN surgeries, hernia, even bariatric surgery. Okay, how do you prevent bowel obstructions? <laughs> I think that it's not something where someone can say they did something to cause it. They purposely did something. Nobody would purposely do something to cause a bowel obstruction um, unless you want to swallow bullets or something weird or a bunch of drugs in bags. Okay, anyway. Maybe, you know, that would do it. But other than that, you're not going to eat a whole bunch of seeds and nuts and, and then say, well, maybe I'll get one. That could happen, but does that mean you should never eat the things that you love? What they do say on how to prevent this, especially if you're somebody susceptible to getting uh, or that has adhesions, has had a lot of bowel or pelvic surgery, um, has had a history of bowel obstructions and bowel surgery for the obstruction, I guess I would really maybe pay attention to what your doctor or nutritionist tells you to do. What they're talking about here is eating small amounts of food throughout the day, cooking the food well, chewing the food well. Okay, so take your time with your meals. Why cook your food well? Because um, for a lot of people who have a history of bowel obstruction, it's good to cook those fruits and vegetables instead of having them raw. Uh, so for example, if you really love the flavor of celery, carrots, that sort of thing, celery is kind of a stringy, um, item, I really want to have nuts, stringy items, or um, maybe the peeling of a lot of different um, fruits. But if you really want that, it's better to cook it down if you're going to eat that anyway. Low or modified fiber diet. You hear a lot about high fiber diet this, high fiber diet that. Talk to your doctor about this because a lot of people with history of bowel obstruction or bowel surgeries in the past, they will be advised to be on a low or modified fiber diet. Drink a lot of water. People still, you know, are quite dehydrated. You need water to help push the stool through. And um, exercise, overall healthy lifestyle. Exercise, getting your body moving is going to be extremely helpful. I want to go back again to Markiplier's surgeries. So in 2015, I also was discussed that he was hospitalized, had this bowel obstruction rip, uh, surgery. He also at some point had been found that he had an enlarged appendix. Now I found three areas, including his words that say, the appendix was swollen the size of a beach ball. Okay, so I just wanted to let you know 
that I want to talk about that. What's going on with that? Is that for real? Or is this, did, did somebody mean to tell him softball, baseball, golf ball? Did they really mean to say beach ball? Did they really mean this? So this was his appendix right here, beach ball. So an average appendix is the size of about three inches. All right, so it's average three inches. But how about this? Was it, was it this beach ball? Was this the one? Maybe it was this size. Does that seem like it fits better for an appendix to be that big? Or, or is it something like this? Is, it, is this it? Oh my God, come on Markiplier. How big was your appendix? I'm really very curious. Was it really as big as a beach ball? Which beach ball? There are a lot of different size beach balls. All I gotta say is no wonder you've been in so much pain. You've been in pain because of your previous surgeries. You've been in pain because you have this ginormous uh, appendix. Whether it ruptured or not, getting an appendix to be the size of a beach ball is pretty impressive, even if it's a, if it's a small beach ball. Okay, so I'm just curious about that one. You were in a lot of pain and I have a whole lot of empathy for you on that. I mean, check out this picture I'm gonna put up. Is this mom, is this aunt? Whoever it is, it's really kind of heartbreaking and I can certainly feel for his pain in this picture. As you all probably can too. This is nothing that is taken lightly. It can be life-threatening and I just want to reiterate again, please, please do not treat things like this that could be life-threatening at home. Do not try to clear it out with things you find on Google. If you think that you're getting an obstruction because you've got a large abdomen, you're vomiting, you have a lot of abdominal pain, you're not getting better, you're getting worse and you cannot pass gas, you cannot go to the bathroom, you are constipated and you are not well. Go to the doctor, go to the ER, go to urgent care, but don't give yourself an enema and don't take laxatives, okay? So I hope this was really helpful. My heart goes out to you if anybody has ever had a bowel obstruction. I've taken care of a lot of patients that have had them, adults and children, and um, give yourself some grace because this is not a good thing or fun thing to go through. Thanks for watching. Hey friends, I wanted to mention, check out my shirt. This is a vintage Markiplier t-shirt. It doesn't belong to me, but it's really special.